mission, jealousy, and tragedy. The scene is a seaside village of Invernewton, famous for its calm, rustic atmosphere and for its fabulous raspberry ripple ice cream. We join three fishermen, Frederick, Jerry, and Jemima, as they begin, as they begin their work on a completely normal day. Or is it? Deceit, ambition, jealousy, and tragedy. This is the story of. Wait a minute! You can't eat Dana! I've been having my name in lights! You were? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but that's what's written here in the script. Exit disgruntled fisherman. Oh, is it now? That's an awful coincidence, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> They're all just blaming it on the script, isn't they, Jemima? They are. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's in the script. The script says this and the script says that. I don't even know what script is. <laughs> she doesn't even know what script is. Talk about living in a democratic state. <laughs> and so the three fishermen left to go on a holiday for a while, safe in the knowledge that they had enough raspberry ripple ice cream to last until about next Tuesday. Wait, why are we leaving? Because it says so in the script. <laughs> This is the story of deceit, ambition, jealousy, and tragedy. This is the story of Jack and Jill. <laughs> you moron! You skipped an hour! Seven o'clock. <laughs> Jack and Jill both live in a semi-detached postmodern tenement flat. Their apartments are similar in every way, and although they are completely unaware of each other, every night they sleep on either side of a thin wall. They have never met and never will do. Today is a perfectly normal day for both Jack and Jill. They will get washed. <laughs> they will eat food. 
<laughs> they will open their door. Not, not that door. <laughs> Just like every other day, Jack and Jill will step into the wonderful world, admiring its beauty. Just like every other day, Jack will turn right to begin his daily journey to Right Side Industries, working as a financial insurance consultant. Just like every other day, Jill will turn left to begin her daily journey to Left Side Industries, working as a departmental disclosure secretary. <laughs> what, what's going on? You're, you're never supposed to meet. Uh... Suddenly, two policemen pass by on their morning patrol. Places, Jack and Jill begin consulting finance and disclosing departments.
Jill, have you been wasting company time again? You do realise it's company policy not to waste time. I'm... Sorry. I didn't realise it was... A company policy. Are you sure? Well, I'm just afraid that's not good enough. So... I think I'm going to have to let you go. Oh, please, not that. Anything but that. I'm sorry, Jill. I'm sorry, Jill. You're fired! <laughs> Jack and Jill, who had of course been working at Brandt and Left Side Industries since the day they were born, were a little sad to be fired. They both began their long journey home, each wrapped up in their own worlds of depression and despair. Do. 
Uh, Carlos, Pedro, Alberto, Jack and Jill, tired from their jollity, settled down to sleep. Alberto, you must play your trombone all through the night. stumbled across the scene and seized the Mexicans, who happened to be illegal immigrants. They let Jack and Jill sleep on. Alberto, you stupid idiot! <laughs> Sing a song! I can't remember any! As dawn breaks, Jack and Jill wake up in their own homes, finding that they have fallen out of bed. They try desperately to remember a very strange dream.
in the sunshine, playing on the grass with rabbits too. <laughs> in the frolic with the dolphins and the creatures. Of course, 
characters. Perhaps planting a seed of doubt amongst them will help. Jack, Jill, Carlos, Pedro and Alberto slowly began to realise that the only possible conclusion was that one of them was the fabled writer. It is him! It must be him! He has been shifted from the start! <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Alberto! Alberto, put the gun down. Don't move! I mean it! I'll shoot! Don't point the gun! <laughs> The tension in the air was thick as marmalade. So thick, you couldn't cut it with a knife. The party's nerves racked as they wondered who could possibly be the culprit. If you don't shut up, narrator, I am going to shoot you. <laughs> How could you possibly do that? I control your world. I control everything you do. I'm the... <laughs> Only the writer could shoot the narrator. It must be you, Carlos.